Here's a quick tutorial on how to create custom low poly skyboxes for Unity in Blender. So your game can go from boring procedural skies to something like this that better fits your theme. Let's get started. I'm using Blender 2.79, but this should work in just about any version. Just a quick note, we're going to be working entirely from the origin, so if you accidentally left click somewhere, you'll move the 3D cursor and subsequently the insertion point away from the origin. Uh, to reset it, you're just going to press Shift S and select Cursor to Center, and that'll reset the 3D cursor back to the origin. First, we need to clear out all the default objects by pressing A twice to select all, and then X to delete. Then we're going to press Shift A, go up to Mesh, and choose Icosphere. Next, we're going to go ahead and delete the bottom half of the sphere because we don't need it. Um, with the sphere selected, you can see that orange outline. We're going to press Tab to go into Edit Mode. I'm going to press 1 on the Number Pad to go to the front view. And then I'm going to press the Limit Selection to Visible toggle so that we can select vertices on the opposite side of the mesh. I'm going to press A to deselect everything, then B to box select and drag a bounding box around the bottom half of the sphere. I'm going to be careful not to select the center part of the sphere here. I'm going to press X and delete vertices, and you should have half a sphere left. Now this sphere is a little bit low poly for me, and I want to increase its polygons. So I'm going to press A to select all, and then W and subdivide smooth. Now I'm going to do this a couple times just to kind of fit my, my theme. I think three times is enough. Since we use the default radius, we should probably scale the sphere up a bit. I'm going to press S to scale and type 10 to make it 10 times as big. Press Enter to confirm mouse wheel down to zoom out a little bit. Next we're going to add a material to the to our sky. In the properties panel I'm going to select the materials tab. It looks like this orange red brown circle. Then I'm going to click new. I can go down to the diffuse and I'm going to pick a nice sky color. Maybe something with a medium saturation blue. That looks that looks pretty good. Now we've got a nice faceted dome of our chosen sky color. I'm going to press tab to go back into object mode, and the sphere looks a little too smooth for my theme. If that's what you're going for, then that's great. You can skip these next couple steps, but I think I want it a little jaggy and rough it up a bit. Um, again, the properties window, I'm going to go over to the modifiers tab. It's this little wrench. I'm going to click the top drop down and select displace. Under the texture heading, I'm going to click new, and this will create a texture to use as our displacement. I'm going to switch over to the textures tab. It looks like this little checkerboard over here. And go down to the type and switch it from imager movie to clouds. You should see the sky dome get a little more personality to it at this point. We can adjust just how much personality it has by going back into the modifiers tab and messing with this strength property. I can turn it down or I can turn it way up. Mm, spiky. I think a value of around 1 looks pretty good for me. Next, we need to add a ground plane. I'm going to make just a simple flat one. I'm going to press Shift A, Mesh, Plane. Now, I can't see it inside, but it's still selected, so I'm going to press S to scale and type 10. You should see it poking out the sides now. And it's a bit too high up. I'm going to drag it down until it's just above the bottom of our dome. Let's give it a material color with the same way we did with the sky dome. Go over here into the materials tab, click new, diffuse, and give it a nice yellowy green grass color. Now that we have some sky and some ground, we need some light. Press shift A, lamp, point. This is gonna put a point light at the center of the scene. Its default value should be okay. Next we need a camera. Same thing, shift A, camera. We're going to be manipulating the camera inside the dome, and it'd be nice if we had x-ray vision to be able to see what it's doing. Since we have the camera already selected, let's go over to the properties panel and hit the object tab. It's this orange cube. We're gonna go down to the display group and select x-ray. 
Now, even though the camera is inside the dome, we can still see it and easily select it. If we press F12 now, we should see something like this. This is what our camera is seeing. Uh, if we press Escape, we clear out that render. Next, let's clear out all the rotations of the camera. So let's press N to open up the tool shelf and look up at the top and we see these rotations. I'm just going to click and set them all to zero. And this will point our camera straight down. An environment map consists of six square images, up, forward, left, right, back, and down. We're going to capture renders in each of those directions and let Unity stitch them together for us. I did say square images, and by default, Blender has a non-square camera set up. Let's go into the Render tab, and in Dimensions, change the X and Y of the resolution to 1024, and slide this all the way up to 100% to get full 1K images. We also need to set the field of view for the camera. So let's go up here into the camera settings. In lens, change millimeters to field of view and set it to 90 so that the four cardinal directions capture a 360 degree image. Let's click render. You should see a rather green image. This is our down image. To save it to our hard drive, we go to the lower left and click Image, Save as Image, find the folder you want to store it in, and I'm going to name this one down.png, and click Save as Image. I'm going to press Escape to get back to the 3D view. Now we should capture our forward image. So in the rotation, I'm going to change the X to 90. You should see the camera flip up, and then press Render again, and this is our forward view image, save as image. I'm going to name this one forward. Click save as image. And press escape and get back to our 3D view. Now we need to turn the camera so that faces left, right, up, down, and back. I'm going to fast forward through these, but it's the same process for each one. I'm about to capture the up image, and it's important to note that the lower edge of the up image is the upper edge of the front image, and the upper edge of the down image is the lower edge of the front image. This will help Unity align all of our images. Now that we have all six images, let's switch over to Unity and build the skybox. I've opened up Unity and imported my six images. And the first thing I need to do is change the wrap mode from repeat to clamp. This will get rid of any little artifacts that are on the edges of our images when Unity lines them up. I'm going to right click, create, material, I'm going to name it. Change the shader from standard to skybox six sided. And here I can drag in my six images. Now one thing to note is that the left and the right are going to be backwards. So I'm going to put my right image in the left spot and the left image in the right spot. Fill in all the rest of them. And now I'm going to go to my main camera. I'm going to add a component called Skybox. Drag the material in. And now we have a low poly 360 skybox.